Hi, so thanks for tuning in to Tam Talks Tanks. So you want a shrimp bowl that's like mine, but how exactly do you go about that? Well, have I got the video for you. So um, first of all, we start with layers of an aquarium and yeah, aquariums are like onions or like ogres. They have layers. Um, you have your substrate layer. Typically speaking, you'll have a substrate layer. You'll have a mid column and you'll have a top column in, in your water, right? But you can go even deeper than that if you really want to. And in order to have a very successful setup, Realistically, you do want to go a little bit deeper. And by deeper, I mean the substrate. Look at this. You don't get this. You don't get plant growth like this just by having a tiny little bit of soil at the bottom. You've got to have enough soil for the roots to really be able to, to bed in. And... The more nutrients that you can pack in there, the longer it's going to last. There is a balance. You don't want to go completely overboard to the point where your tank is just riddled with algae. Sorry, that's quite bright, isn't it? Um, you don't want to go so overboard that your tank is completely riddled with algae. But you also don't want to go underboard, if you like. Um, you don't want to put in too little because otherwise your plants are going to suffer and realistically I need, to, I need to top up my soil a little bit because this is a small bowl so there's not, there's not a lot of room for soil. I've put in as much as I could but it is what it is. Um, so you have a good soil layer and it can be aquarium soil, it can be soil like from the garden top soil it can be um organic compost as long as it doesn't contain pesticides you're all right you can if you're doing a dirted tank like from soil outside you can make your spouse very unhappy with you by putting the soil in the oven and cooking it for a bit. Um, I decided that I really value my relationship, so I didn't do that and I went for going for the more expensive method of just using aquarium soil, which is already um, kind of suitable for aquariums. Um, again, if you are going to do the organic compost thing, make sure it's organic. You cannot allow pesticides in there because they'll they'll leach into the water and kill everything that lives in the water and yeah yeah don't want that so going back to layers your dirt so so important um you can get away with just using root tabs um but i think that plant roots really like to cling onto stuff. I mean, you can do hydroponics for a reason, you know, water, water works as long as it's got nutrients in it. But I, I like dirted tanks. I like having a base layer of soil. Um, and you can see underneath here, there's um, a lot of gravel. And I chose gravel as my cap because it allows for more um, more aeration through um, through your substrate layer. So you're less likely to get pockets of anaerobic bacteria growing. Um, anaerobic bacteria, they're not necessarily bad. Um, in the long term, they're actually beneficial, but short term, it can make your aquarium smell a bit swampy. This did go through a bit of a phase before the roots really bedded in. It's actually why I decided to have a carpet at the front of the tank because 
I was getting some um, some anaerobic pockets and I, I didn't like my aquarium smelling and I was worried about it not being good for the shrimp. Um, but it's fine now. If you do find that you get anaerobic pockets, you can you can get something like a skewer or a chopstick or something, something that's not too sharp in case you accidentally, you know, stab one of your one of your inhabitants in the tank. That wouldn't be fantastic. Um, but I use a kind of blunt chopstick and I just poke at the soil. Um, it does kick up a little bit of the soil into the water column, so you might have to do a water change, um, or it might you might find that it's fine just settling as it is. Um, I found it was fine just settling, um, and that's a point actually. Uh, the soil escaping into the uh, the the water column that's that's the term. Um, that's why you want to have a thick cap on it, um, so that the nutrients are released slowly into the water column rather than quick as heck because you want your nutrients to stay in there and also if you get tons of nutrients in your water column it's just going to make a ton of algae um, and algae isn't necessarily bad for your tank in fact algae can be quite beneficial but it's not really what you want to look at when you have a planted tank. You want to be able to, you want to be able to enjoy it. I'm really sorry about the light. Um, there's not really much I can do about that. It's just this camera. Um, again, Pixel Six, good camera, but not necessarily for this kind of stuff. But you know, we crack on. So we've got our soil. We've got our our um, usually a gravel cap. Um, if you want to use sand you can i would recommend not using a fine sand um i would recommend like just regular grainy sand um or even coarse sand which might be classed as a fine gravel even i have a somewhat coarse sand in my big tank and it's working out quite well the corridoras love it um, because they can still sift around in it absolutely fine. It, it's so smooth that it doesn't damage their barbels. And um, it's actually really lovely to be able to see them root around. Um, but you don't need sand for something like this, especially if you want to have a carpet at the front. Some, some plants prefer a, a finer substrate so that they can poke through better. This hair grass behind me has um, some <laughs> some strands are kind of pointing the wrong way underneath the substrate, but it's carpeted really well regardless. And um, yeah, it's it's been it's been fine. Um, so after you've got your two bottom layers, we need to start thinking about mid column. And we're, we're still kind of thinking about um, kind of nutrients in the water because this bowl doesn't have a filter. The thing that filters this bowl are the plants and the plants are the life energy of this bowl behind me because if there weren't plants then it would just be it'd be a shrimp and snail toilet and nobody wants to live in a toilet. I don't think anyone could live in a toilet. Um, it wouldn't be pleasant. It wouldn't be pleasant. So the plants clean everything. And in fact, um, some plants in here, like hornwort, I do have a little bit hidden at the back, um, just floating. Um, you can't see it. Well, actually you can. Um, it's kind of crept around the, fl the front because it's so, so fast growing that it's actually often used in sewage works to help to purify the water because it just absorbs waste like that and it grows like that. So it's fantastic to have in this sort of setup. Um, you really want fast growing plants. 
Um, you can have slower growers in there. Like I've got, I've got some uh, Cryptocorin Winty in there. I've got some um, Cryptocorin Balancy in here. Um, but I also have the the lifeblood <laughs> of the aquarium that's not just for looks. I have Ludwigia glandulosa. I have um, Alternanthera rosifolia. I have hornwort. I can't remember the scientific name. I have duckweed that's Lemna minor. I have salvinia that I can't remember its Latin name. <laughs> we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, I, I have um, dwarf hair grass. Um, which grows pretty quickly in this setup. I never knew it as a fast growing plant, but I have to trim it on the regular, like every couple of weeks. Otherwise, it, otherwise it'll grow up like here and I won't be able to see my shrimp. That has happened. Um, this was very, very recently trimmed and it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. We've actually got some Java moss um, down at the, the bottom of the woods right there. And we've got some weeping moss up at the top here. And your mosses are great too, because they're fast growing and they'll also provide a kind of constant food source for your shrimpies and your snails. Because they'll catch food, any any food that falls down, they'll they'll catch it and then the um the shrimp like to to pick at it. So make sure that you've got fast growing plants. Um the faster growing, the more work it is, but the healthier your aquarium is going to be. So things like pearl weed are great. I want to get pearl weed. I really, really want it, but I can't find it at any of my local fish shops. And I, I like to buy plants in person. I've never ordered, I've not ordered plants online for about 10 years, something like that. And I've heard all sorts of horror stories of plants arriving dead. And that's like from friends, like people that I know. So I'd rather not go through that. And I'd rather just buy them in the shop. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, at the mercy of what my local fish shop has. But usually you'll find that your local fish shop will have some sort of fast growing plant. I had to get my floaters from a friend because my fish shop doesn't, my local fish shop just does not stock duckweed or salvinia, but they will stock larger floaters like, um, like, uh, like water lettuce and things like that. Why did that take me so long? Um, so anyway, Dirt, gravel, fast growing plants, best friends. Next, you want to think about your lighting. And you'll see that <laughs> it's pretty bright behind me. It's not actually as bright as this in real life. It's just the camera. I mean, it's, it's pretty bright, but um, this is just the camera kind of focusing on my face and then not knowing what to do with the background light. But if you look at that, that's how bright my light is. And you can see up top, it is pretty bright. It's like the sun. Um, but that's all the better for the plants. I did have a period where I grew a lot of algae, but the the bladder snails, the nerite snails and the shrimp cleared that up pretty quickly. Um, and as the plants started growing in, they kind of, they outcompeted the algae for available nutrients in the water column. So you'll see that my Ludwigia right there is looking quite red. And that is because it turns red under low nitrate conditions. So this water, I could probably drink it. I've tasted it before. I've not had a glass of it, but just out of curiosity, I I put a drop on my finger and I tried it and it tasted better than the tap water because <laughs> it's got like no waste in it essentially because it just keeps on getting yummied up by all the plants. Um, and um, where was I? <laughs> um, so 
fast growing plants. Um, yeah, you, you might grow algae. That's normal. You might have a, a bladder snail or whatever pest snail um, infestation happening where the population booms and it feels like it's all going to crumble before your eyes. It's not. It's going to be fine. Your snails will breed to the amount of the amount of available food, and that includes algae, and that also includes what you're feeding, what you're feeding um, these guys, like your your livestock. In this case, shrimp. Um, so I I was feeding my shrimp, um, and obviously. I started off with four shrimp and obviously feeding four shrimp it's kind of hard to gauge how much you should be feeding them um, so I was definitely overfeeding them and that's why I had such a huge boom in snails because there was there was algae growing because the plants were still new and they were still bedding in I was overfeeding my shrimp um, so the bladder snails just went ha ha <laughs> we're home um and yeah I, I ended up um taking about 200 snails if not more than that outside with a stone and but i think that's probably the most humane way to to um eliminate snails um because it, it's so it's over with so quickly it's just out like a light um so talking about algae growth and your plant growth um there's no carbon dioxide going into this there's no co2 literally only light and um dr diana wallstad recommends having a siesta period where you just simply smooth where you just simply turn out the light and she suggests a siesta period of like four hours i think it was i might be wrong um i don't do a four hour siesta because i don't think i don't think i need it every tank is different so it's like driving a car you kind of you kind of learn how to drive a car like you know one size fits nobody <laughs> sort of a thing um but then when you start driving your car, you find your pivot points, you find all these little intricate details that you didn't pick up on in your driving lessons. And you learn how to drive your car rather than bobs down the road. And it's just the same with fish tanks. Every fish tank is unique. So what works for one tank might not work for, for another fish tank that you have just because every tank is its own experiment so i have a siesta pe i have a siesta period on my big tank um for two hours in the day um to replenish carbon dioxide concentrations um i have this one i i don't have this one on a timer because <laughs> i don't have a timer plug yet it's in the works i will get one eventually so it's never been entirely consistent, but it's proof that you can do it without a timer plug. Um, as long as you are somewhat consistent. And some days it gets, you know, effectively full sun all day. Um, and I might see a little bit more algae growth. In fact, sometimes if I'm really bad, I might see a lot more algae growth. But then you can fix that by doing it right <laughs> and having that siesta period of you know two hours four hours even five hours and it means that you can enjoy your tank in the morning when you're getting ready for work and things like that and then when you're at work there's a period of time where it turns off and then when you're home you get to enjoy your tank for the rest of the evening um for more in-depth lighting schedules you can do things like dimming the lights at a certain time you can um 
you know, adjust the, the RGB or the, re the, the red, <laughs> the re red, green and blue of your light. So you can adjust the white light. You know, you can get really in depth with with your lighting schedule. Um, this is proof that you don't have to. Um, this light is designed to grow plants, so that's that's it. I spent about twenty five pounds on that bulb. It fits a standard desk lamp. It's an E twenty five fitting, um, and that's all I've needed. Um, in regards to plants with CO2 concentrations in the water, that's why you have a siesta, it's to build up, um, it's to replenish um, carbon dioxide concentrations in the water because after about four hours of the light being on, it's, it's estimated around four hours after your light is on, your tank has your plants have exhausted their supply of CO2 and there's there's nothing left for them. Um, and then that's when algae can come in because they are, they're more efficient at being able to use nutrients and being able to use very little CO2 to be able to take over a tank. Um, not all plants need CO2 in the water, like these guys, floating plants, duckweed, oh sorry guys, I'm scaring my shrimp, duckweed and, um, and salvinia, they don't need CO2 in the water because they take CO2 from the atmosphere, so they'll, they'll just keep going, <laughs> they'll keep going and going and going, sucking out all of that waste and again, I cannot stress it enough that you don't want your your pets to be swimming in a toilet. They don't want to live in a toilet. You don't want to live in a toilet. No one can survive living in a toilet. You try living in the sewers. Uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. So you don't want these guys to live in their own sewage. So the more, the more plants that you can pack in that will absorb those nutrients the better because with the shrimp you can probably see there's there's more than four in there now and the population it keeps growing and growing and growing and the more the more plants that you have in there the more waste that they'll be able to process into their own growth and the more livestock you'll be able to keep in your bowl like shrimp who don't mind being a bit crowded they actually kind of like it because it makes them feel safe um so yeah i don't really know how much more there is to tell you um make sure that you've got a good substrate like make sure that you've got some amount of dirt or whatever um make sure that you don't use anything with pesticides um, make sure that you have a good cap on your, um, on your chosen dirt. And if you don't use dirt, you can use root tabs to kind of artificially supply the, the tank nutrients. But it's all in that bottom layer. Um, I think it was Corey from Aquarium Co-op had said that, um, a plant, a root, a root feeding plant will take seventy five percent of its nutrients from its from the the benthic layer, like the the substrate layer, um, and they'll take twenty five percent of their nutrients from the water column. And the opposite is true for um, water feeding, water column feeding plants like your stem plants. They'll still take about twenty five percent of their nutrition from the soil. So it's so important to be able to get that nutrient rich layer going in there. Um, so yeah, that's two. Um, fast growing plants are your best friend. Um, and floating plants are another one because they don't have a CO2 limitation um, and they'll just be able to keep keep taking in those those nutrients and 
they're, they will go nuts. You'll have to like scoop them out every every so often, but that's just part of the maintenance of having one of these things. Um, and um, your lighting, you want a good light, a good light that's going to grow plants. It's no, there's no point in using, in using a, you know, a, a rubbish light, <laughs> essentially something that's really dim, because your plants need light. Light is, in plant terms, it's a nutrient that they need. And if they're deficient in it, they're not going to grow and they're going to die. And I had that happen myself. So I tried to make it not happen this time and look at the results. Um, you also want a siesta to rebuild carbon dioxide levels. Um, and if you don't follow a siesta, then you're going to have algae unless you have a light that's not quite as bright as this. You can get away with a dimmer light and having it on for a longer period of time, but I think that that's harder to pull off without growing tons of algae. It's up to you. Again, you'll find what works for you. I'm giving you options. I'm, I'm letting you know what's out there so that you can try it because one of the beautiful things about this hobby is it's an experiment. You get to see what works and what doesn't work and you'll find what works for you and what doesn't work for you and we're all individuals so you know i my my siestas for this are all over the place at the moment um because of just life schedules and i don't have a timer but i make sure it gets it for at least a couple of hours a day and if i don't do that then it lets me know because algae grows <laughs> and it's hair algae and it's really annoying um and yeah i i fertilize every so often now because the the floating plants really do take up take out a lot of that nutrient rich stuff in the water um and it's it's thriving um i i fertilize um, every time I do a, a water change on this and it's been, it's been good. So there you have it. That is, that's how I set up my tank. That's how I set up the Wallstad shrimp bowl, the Wallstad shrimp bowl. It's not strictly Wallstad, but it's, it's in that style and I, I I wouldn't have been able to pull this off without the information that's out there um, regarding the Wallstad method. Again, tweak it and see what works for you. And um, I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I've enjoyed making it. I can't believe I've been rambling for like nearly half an hour. I am so sorry. I hope that you've just been able to have this in the background and being able to do whatever you want to do, like do some cleaning or something around the house. Um, but yeah, I hope it's been helpful. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please, um, you know, any feedback is so appreciated um, in the form of like a like, a dislike, uh, a comment to say hey Tamara your video is great or hey Tamara your video is rubbish and please like don't ever do this again um you know just feedback it's it's good stuff it lets me know what I'm doing right and what you guys enjoy and I enjoy doing this so you know it's, it's, it's a win-win um so yeah like comment subscribe all that good stuff. You know what to do. You watch other YouTubers and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!